Here's a footage of my DJ Avata 2 right before it crashed. Turns out, even an experienced pilot can have a wipeout. In this video, I will explain why you are practically guaranteed to crash based on human reaction time and braking distance if you don't anticipate this trap. I hope this video helps you avoid the same pitfall. So, here's the story. I just bought my Avatar 2 not long ago. And since the weather was nice that afternoon, I decided to practice flying. The first part of the flight went great. Check out the footage. Pretty cool, right? But then, in the last few minutes, disaster struck. I crashed. It was getting dark, so I decided to head home and try recovering it the next day. On my way back, I couldn't stop thinking about what caused the crash. Maybe I messed up with the controls? I really wanted to figure it out. So, once I got home, I immediately did two things. First, check if the goggles recorded the crash. I've been recording the whole time, and the goggles usually keep a backup. So I plugged the memory card into the computer, and bam, there was a video. Number two, track where the drone went down. I hook up my DJI Goggle 3 to my iPhone, and the DJI Fly app syncs the flight data. Opening the app, I could see the full flight path, including the exact crash spot. From the flight logs, I pinned down the crash site, about 450 meters from takeoff. Many of you may not know how to get the accurate location of the crash site. Here are the five steps. 1. Download the flight logs from goggles to your phone. Connect the goggles to your phone using a data cable. The DJI Fly app automatically saves those logs to your phone. 2. Transfer logs to your computer. Hook up your phone to your computer. For iPhone, the path is typically files, DJI Fly, Fly Records. Just copy the entire Fly Records folder to your computer. 3. Decode the flight logs. DJI flight logs are encrypted, so you need a special tool to read them. I used the free Phantom Help site. Locate the most recent log by date. Upload it and let the site parse it. Four, get the coordinates. After Hanton help process the log, you can download a CSV file. Open it in Excel and find the latitude and longitude in the last row. Five, mark the spot on map. Paste those coordinates into Google Maps and save them. That way, I can use my iPhone for precise navigation. Then I replayed the last minute footage on my computer. Let's break down what happened. My plan was to film around the bridge first. When the battery hit about 40%, I noticed sunset making the hillside look gorgeous. So I decided to zip up to the top for an overhead shot. Since the Avatar 2 is a FPV drone, it can climb right along the treetops. So I hugged the hillside and moved in spot mode, flying with full throttle, but staying cautious about obstacles. Watching the footage later, it hit me. I totally forgot about the max attitude limit while climbing fast. The system 
just flashed a small on-screen alert and immediately cut all upward thrust. Reviewing the slow motion replay, I saw that only 0.37 seconds elapsed between the alert appearing and the drone colliding with obstacles. Meanwhile, a typical human pilot needs around 0.3 seconds to notice a danger and react. Then another 10 meters of braking distance to stop safely. If the obstacle is just 5 meters away, it's practically 100% chance you'll crash. This revelation also explains why DJI display all obstacle avoidance on its standard camera drones when you switch to spot mode. Even if avoidance were on, the drone simply could not stop in time. So engineers decided it was better to turn it off entirely. For a regular aerial camera drone, the attitude limit mechanism might be acceptable because most people don't fly super close in sport mode. But for an FPV drone, it can be a nasty trap. The system should at least gradually reduce climbing power rather than cut it instantly, giving the pilot a bit of reaction time to recover. Once I knew why it crashed, it was time to plan the rescue. Tomorrow, I'll head out to see if I can get there. The catch? It's a wild hillside with a creek in the way. I need to cut through someone's yard and wade across to reach it. If I can't recover it, I might have to use DJI's fly away coverage. That's 199 for replacement. I will film it tomorrow and update you guys about how it goes. I actually thought of several backup plans. For example, I could send my DJI Mini 4 Pro to scout from the air. See if I could visually locate the Avatar 2 and check if there's a clear route to get there on foot, particularly crossing the creek safely. If I had a bigger drone, I might even try airlifting the Avatar 2 out. But sadly, I don't have that kind of gear. Here I am at the spot the drone crashed. To get to the hillside, I first had to cross a resident's lawn. I was figuring out how to talk to them when within two minutes, the owner drove up. I explained the situation and asked if I could pass through his yard. He was super, he was super cool and gave me permission right away. After the lawn, I hit the creek. It was shallow, just calf deep. So to save 200 bucks, I didn't care about wet shoes and wade through. Okay. Then came a steep hill. To avoid slipping, I picked a path with trees to grab onto and started climbing slow and steady. It's kind of slippery. Climbing a few dozen meters, I reached a gentle slope halfway. I was pretty winded, but knowing I was close to success 
kept me going. I found a sturdy branch on the ground to use as a hiking stick, which definitely helped. Eventually, I hit the marked coordinates. Because phone GPS isn't pinpoint accurate, it can drift on the map. I had to do a search in a 10 to 20 meter radius. I rushed over to check the danger. Two pops broken, some scratches, and the battery popped out. But when I reattached the battery, the camera, the gimbal was still totally fine. This thing is tough, surviving a 15 meter fall. Probably thanks to the soft ground and a silicone cover I added. I won't bore you with the details on how I got back down safely. I took a safer, long route, got a bit messy, but made it back to the bottom in one piece. On my way back, I started reflecting the whole ordeal. It feels like every day in life follows some hidden probability script. Today's events, like the homeowner appearing just in time, and the creek, hillside, being all within my capability, felt weirdly perfect, challenging but never hopeless. This kind of just right script is what makes each day unique. That's all for today. I hope my experience serves as a good reminder. So, drone pilots out there, do you check your height limits before climbing fast? Ever crashed like this? Drop your thoughts and stories in the comments. I'll catch you next time. Bye!